This week on the Time Lapse Show, sometimes when we're out shooting time lapse, things can go horribly wrong. Sometimes they can get downright spooky. And we end up with time lapse terror. So this week in celebration of Halloween, we are going to be telling our biggest Halloween time lapse horror stories. So get ready for some spooky stuff. <laughs> Hello fellow time lapsers. I'm video producer and photographer Steve Barth. This is show number ironically 13 for the week beginning October 29th, 2018. Now you might notice we are definitely in the Halloween mood. I've got the Halloween mood lighting going on here in the studio and to make things even spookier and scarier, I've been down sick with a cold all week which means my voice is in going well and you might have to deal with the very white version of my voice but you know what it'll just make it extra scary for this our halloween episode of the time lapse show <laughs> So as I mentioned at the top of the show, sometimes things can go really wrong when you're shooting a time lapse project. Now, when you're a regular photographer, it's nice and easy. You get your camera, you put your settings into the back of it, you figure out, you compose your shot, and you take the picture. Click, done. You look at your picture, see if you accomplished the right results. You know immediately, especially in the age of digital photography, if you did your job right. And if you didn't, you can make adjustments. Now, in time-lapse production, we're setting up to do, at a minimum, for me anyway, an hour-long shot. Many times, it's multiple hours, five, six hours. So you've got to make sure that everything is perfect before you hit that start button to start that time-lapse project. And when time-lapses are going on, sometimes things can go a little bit wrong. So in last week's show, I put the call out for you to share your horror stories with us. What's those biggest things that have gone wrong for you when you're out shooting horror stories? Now, I can't really expect to share everyone else's stories without sharing my own. So we're going to start off today with my own spooky Halloween horror story. So back in 2014, I was commissioned to do a film that we shot over in Eastern Washington. Now, the location for this particular film was really out in the middle of nowhere. Um, when I was out on site, uh, there, there wasn't anybody else around. As is my style, I really like using time lapse as part of a film to help tell the story. Sometimes I can use those to show you know, the passage of time. Sometimes I can use time lapses to you know, really show off the beauty of the landscape. And both of these held true for this particular project. So I wanted to head up you know, a few days early so I could really have time to photograph the land, get those time lapses in the bag before it was loaded down with people. So on my first night up there, I was really excited. Now, the, the base camp for this place is it's this nice, beautiful, green, grassy field surrounded by trees. This is where we were all setting up, and this is where we're going to be sleeping throughout the shoot. Um, so as I said, I got up there a few days early. I was the only person there in this whole big area area not another human being around for miles and miles which in and of itself was a little bit spooky but that's not the spookiness of this horror story now in preparation for this particular film and these time lapses that I was getting ready to shoot I had some really cool new gear I had a new camera I had uh, I just barely gotten my uh, syrup genie and I was really excited to try this out this is the first time I was able to try it out so the first night I got up there I look up the stars beautiful full night. There's no city lights anywhere around. Awesome for the stars. So I get everything set up to do this nice follow the stars along the sky type of shot. Um, now, granted, I wasn't sure if the genie was going to be working correctly because I'd never used it. So I stayed up for a nice hour just doing nothing but watching the gear. 
And you know when you're shooting time lapses, the gear does not move fast. So there's not a lot to watch. But I just I wanted to make sure that everything was was good to go before I felt confident going to sleep and letting the camera just continue on for the rest of the night to finish off that shot. But like I said, after about an hour, I was like, okay, nothing can go wrong in this scenario. And I went back to my tent and finally got myself to sleep. About an hour later, I woke up to the worst sound anybody with brand new camera gear, even old camera gear, wants to hear. Now, as I said, I'm in the middle of a green grassy field. Out in the middle of eastern Washington, the reason that that field was so green, unbeknownst to me, was that at 4 o'clock in the morning, a giant bank of sprinklers came on to water that field. I did not know about this. Now, these are not small sprinklers. These are gigantic industrial farm sprinklers. And so my tent was parked right on top of one, as I suddenly discovered. And in that 30 seconds when I woke up, <laughs> felt completely drenched as everything in my tent just <laughs> got soaked. And I realized I have expensive high-end gear sitting out in the middle of this field that's now getting soaked. So I jump up, unzip my tent. I go racing out as fast as I possibly can. And the strength of these sprinklers was crazy because as I'm sprinting across the field, granted, I'd just woken up. I was disoriented. It was completely pitch black dark. But as I'm sprinting across the field, one of these sprinklers came across my head, knocked me with a blast of water that just completely took me off my feet, knocked me over. This was some high-powered sprinklers. Now, <laughs> the good news in all this, this, this story is that the field was only being watered in zones. The first zone to go off was the back part of the field and the side part of the field, which where my tent was. So by the time I got to my camera gear, it was still nice and dry <laughs> because that zone had not been watered yet. Granted, I was completely drenched and I was panicked because I thought my gear, my brand new expensive gear was completely drenched. Luckily, it was not. So what do we do with that? Well, we always learn from our mistakes. So I learned I have to ask certain questions that I didn't think to ask previously when going into a location for the first time, especially one where there's nice uh, green grass. How does that grass get so green? Now, there were the coordinators that were on site. They had not received the message that I was going to be there a couple days early to know to turn off those sprinklers. But I definitely learned to ask questions like that when I look around and see my surroundings. The next thing I got to do is I've got to make sure, especially out here in the Pacific Northwest, we live in a very damp climate. Um, even in the summer, there's not a night that goes by where I can't put camera gear out without it getting covered in condensation. So I've learned to keep certain coverings with me that I can cover up the camera when I'm going to be doing a long shot uh, over a long period of time. So always ask appropriate questions to make sure that you're staying safe and your gear is staying safe when going into a new location and take the proper protective gear with you so that in case something goes wrong, you're covered. And that's the value of horror stories like these. We can learn those lessons so that way we don't make those same mistakes. And luckily, like I said, in mine, I got out of it in a way where my gear was not damaged. I just got to spend the night soaking wet and panicked as I was worried my stuff had been ruined. Now, a few quick horror stories from you guys that got sent in. Um, this one's really fast from Ulrich Schmidt. He says, once I went outside and forgot an SD card. Scary, I know, and it happens. So remember your SD cards. But this one submitted from Shane O'Reilly. He says, I was at a waterfall around midnight shooting a Star Trail time lapse. I had to walk about two kilometers in the dark to get to this location. While I was sitting there enjoying the beauty of this location and my camera was clicking away, I noticed something on one of the cliffs beside me about 30 meters away. As I looked, it quickly scurried along the side of the cliff. It was too fast for my eyes to focus. To me, it looked like a tiny skinny person about two feet tall with no clothes on. I quickly packed up my gear and got out of there. 
few weeks later, I told my wife about it, and she was very concerned as what I was describing was an ancient aboriginal demon spirit that takes people. Well, crap, don't think I'll be going there again. Awesome, awesome horror stories. I can totally equate as I know all the time when I'm sitting out there with a camera in the dark for several hours at a time, your imagination, your mind can be playing all sorts of tricks on you and then get a little bit spooky unless you find some other way to kill the time. And we'll be talking about fun ways to kill the time during time lapse in an upcoming episode. So keep sharing those stories with me. I love hearing the stuff that you guys get to experience. I love to hear some of those horror stories to get us in the mood for Halloween and get us ready to go. Plus, as I said, we can learn a lot from those horror stories from when things go wrong. Let's make sure we learn our lessons so that things go right the next time we're out shooting. So that's it for this week's show. Like I said, I'm a little under the weather. Hopefully everyone's dealt okay with my voice and I don't look too sickly. We'll just call that all part of the Halloween episode effect. Remember, you can send your questions to the show. Just email show at thetimelapseshow.com. All that information is just right down here. Also down there, you can see that we have accounts on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. So make sure you go check us out, follow us, so that way you can keep up with all the things going on here at The Time Lapse Show. If you do want to send us a message and you don't want to just type it in, feel free to call it into our voicemail line. You can reach us at 541-321-0472. Leave a voicemail and we can feature that on future shows. Remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can leave us a review on iTunes. That helps other people find out about the show as well. You can also leave comments here if you're watching the YouTube version. That way we can answer those questions again in a future show and make sure that we are serving your needs as time-lapse producers. Hope everyone has a fantastic Halloween season. It is a great time to be spooky, to get out there, have fun, and hope everyone has a fantastic, happy Halloween. Now, grab a camera, go speed up the world, and we'll see you next week. Bye.